Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and in this video we are talking about GraphQL. So yes, we all have heard quite a lot about SQL, Structured Query Language. Now what is this new term GraphQL? What does it even mean? What are its advantage and where can I use it? There are a lot of questions that are hanging around. Questions like how does it make my life easier? Should I be implementing in my next project? And the most important question is should I abandon the REST API now that the GraphQL is here? And what exactly this GraphQL is if somebody asks me, define it. So how can I define it? What actually it means? We're gonna answer all of these questions in this video. So let's get started. First and foremost, the biggest question is what is GraphQL? Now GraphQL was designed by Facebook and if you look at the definition on the Facebook actual homepage of GraphQL, it's going to say something like this. GraphQL is a query language designed to build client application by providing flexible and intuitive syntax for asking the data requirement by the clients. Yes, this is exactly the point where the definition is totally correct but it is so hard to understand for a general public like you and me. So let me break down this into smaller and easier syntax so that you can understand it. The main goal behind designing the GraphQL was to make the query smarter. Now so far we have been designing these queries and designing the endpoints such as an API pretty easily and the only problem with them is overfetching or underfetching. Sometimes the data is so less that you have to make another query or sometimes data is coming up that is so much that you don't use all of the data. You just use selective point of the data. Nothing big much of a worry but when you're at a scale of Facebook where billions and millions of people are just querying data every single second then it can be a little bit expensive on the cost of server because a lot of queries are being fetched and data is being transferred. So if we take a very simple example, let me just tell you that we want to fetch a certain information on our website. For example, give me the name, age, height and the highest score of the top 5 player that played in 2005 World Cup, the Cricket World Cup. Yes, it can be done, we can fetch the queries, but now assume the data that you'll be fetching. It will be surely an overfetch. You'll be fetching a lot of information and then we'll be nitpicking the information that is actually being asked. Most of our REST API applications looks like something like this, slash player, slash player, colon ID, and slash country, slash teams, and something like this. Often these endpoints which don't have any IDs just give you all of the information for that endpoint. And often the, these endpoints which do have an ID, they gives you the information about one particular resource, but again, the information is completely full. And whether you require that information or not, it is being served to you. So for the IDs, the whole information is dumped. And for when you don't have ID, like it's, it's gigantic information at that point. The only advantage that we get when we mention the ID is we are asking for one particular resource that we are looking for, but still a lot of information is being dumped. I'm not getting just the name, the height and the highest score of that player. I'm getting a lot of other information like what is his last name, what is his email ID, probably username and a lot of other information. Now imagine you are fetching up 100 IDs. For example, you will be making 100 API requests and 100 response will be given to you. And now you are collecting just 5 information out of that? Yes, that is very very cost expensive even for Facebook. But surely Facebook can afford all of these queries because 100 queries is like nothing for Facebook. But yeah, Facebook eventually thought that hey, we can cut down our resource if we act a little bit smarter. The solution actually came in the form of GraphQL. In the GraphQL, you can make selective endpoints, like you don't have dumb endpoints. You can pick up selective information from that endpoint using GraphQL. GraphQL can dig a little bit deeper into your API endpoints and can pick selective information from it. Now, if I had to compare the GraphQL and the REST API, I would be comparing with the restaurants. Now here, the REST API, I would be comparing it as self-serving restaurant, kind of a buffet. And for the GraphQL, I would be comparing it with a restaurant that is being served by waiter. Now in a restaurant where you are served as a buffet, you just get up from the table and you just go onto each and every table and select the dessert from there. Maybe you will go and select some vegetables or some breads or something like that. But on a restaurant which is served by waiter, 
you actually make smart decision just by sitting on your table. You ask the waiter, hey, I need a bread, I need a pizza, I need a pasta, and I would like to have a wine as well. Waiter will go to each every table, will select the pick up all the required things that you have asked, and is gonna serve to you. So that's actually a smart decision. Now again, this should not be considered as the graph SQL is all amazing and it's all awesome. Sometimes your application actually don't need that kind of uh, dig up into the information and that kind of resources that you need to implement GraphQL. Remember, not everything that comes up as a new is not always all rainbows and sunshine. There are always pros and there are always cons. On to a whole summary note, I would say that when your REST API becomes smarter, that's actually your GraphQL. Now here's a quick screenshot of how the GraphQL queries looks like and how you can select and pick up some selective information that you actually require. I highly recommend to pause and take a look. It's a very small dump down example, but I think it will give you a better example and scenario of how the GraphQL looks like. Okay, so now that you know a lot about the GraphQL, let's also address some of the common questions that floats around over the internet. So I'm going to be picking up some questions and will be answering them related to GraphQL. The first and the most common kind of a myth that floats around is, is GraphQL related to Graph Database? Now, in case you don't know what the Graph Database, I touched upon it a little bit in my NoSQL video. So go ahead, check that out. It just lost the video. So the coming back onto the question, is GraphQL related to Graph Database? The answer is no, it's not. Yes, I know it. It involves the word graph and the graph database is here. It's somewhat kind of a situation where Java and JavaScript are being, are being compared. Similar to like car and carpet. They have nothing to do with them. Now similarly, the GraphQL and the graph database has mostly nothing to do with that. Surely it can be implemented there as well. But the word graph here in the GraphQL simply means that our queries are now able to crawl into the REST API and pick up the selective information. So that's why the name graph actually came up. And the QL, you already know it. It means queried language. Another most important question that usually the new developers seek around is, should I just abandon the REST API and always should use GraphQL? Is there like uh, no usage of uh, REST API now? I would say no. Most of the application now at present of the time recording of this video don't actually need GraphQL. Now, most of the application are working fine with the REST API and you don't need to implement another resource just to have GraphQL. Now, I'm not saying you should not do that. If you do that, that's always going to be advantageous and it's always going to be fun. But there is no such high and immediate need that you should implement GraphQL. Remember, we are talking about the GraphQL where you have millions and millions of query being thrown at a single day. Usually, that's not the case for most of the application. And remember, if that's the case for you, you obviously have the resources to implement GraphQL. You'll be earning that much for sure. In present world, GraphQL is an amazing knowledge that you should look around. But this doesn't mean that the REST API is going anywhere. They are still rock solid. They are going to stay here. And most of the applications still are just fine with the REST API. Also, your application is not going to see a night and day difference in the performance when you'll apply the GraphQL. Surely, for Facebook, it's a night and day difference, but for most of the application that you and me are designing and are working on, it's not going to be a much difference there. Another common question is, what is the syntax difference between the GraphQL and the REST API? Now, the most common difference is in the REST API, you just mentioned something like player and ID, and it's going to throw all the information in front of you. Well, in this screenshot, you can see that when you make a query for the GraphQL, you can neat pick and select the information like name and website of that particular ID. So that's the most basic difference. Surely there are more, but I think this is the most basic one we should discuss in this video. Another common question is, if I need to get started with the GraphQL, what should I need? What is the requirement and how I can proceed in order to learn it? Now, in order to learn the GraphQL, there are two requirements. First of all, you need a server that can serve your API and you need a client where you can fetch all the endpoints uh, from the server. Now, for the server, you can use Node and GraphQL JS. And of course, you can use Express with the GraphQL uh, to make these servers. But again, there are no such shortage of that. And you can also use Apollo, although I haven't personally used Apollo, but there is a lot of good words in the market about the Apollo and neither I am associated with them as well. So I have heard pretty good words about the Apollo. They do have server as the client as well. But uh, most of the developers that I talked and I work with, uh, they have always preferred the usage of the node uh, with Express and the GraphQL so that they can design their customized 
GraphQLs. Now for the clients, also you have variety of resources. You can use Relay. But remember the point that Relay was once an internal tool for the Facebook. So when you'll be using, you'll be feeling more like that, hey, it's overwhelming and I don't need that much of the information or that much of the ability that this tool is able to do. So again, remember that this was once an internal tool at the Facebook. Surely Apollo does have a client, but I haven't personally used it anywhere. So uh, just feel free to explore it. The more you're gonna explore, the more you're gonna learn. For reading purposes, the Facebook official documentation is pretty amazing, very, very elaborative, and one of the well-written documentation for the GraphQL. So make sure you check that out as well. Okay, so this was the whole detail about what is GraphQL and some of the important points that I wanted to discuss about GraphQL. I know these kinds of videos sometimes stretch a little bit longer, but these information need to be packed up in just one video so that we can just make a precise point that, that hey, if you want to learn GraphQL, that's the video you can look at and that's the great starting point. I hope you have enjoyed this video. In case you have enjoyed this video, your simple thumbs up can really be a great motivator for me. Now, in case you want to add something more about this GraphQL and some information related to it or maybe a discussion, I will be looking forward in the comment section. And one more thing, if you want me to make video on another such technology, your suggestions are always welcome. I read all of the comments, so go down in the comment section and let me know what more subjects should I cover. I would love to make videos for your demand. That's it for this video and in case you want to look forward for more videos and want to get notification, hit that subscribe icon and yes, YouTube has introduced a bell icon which you mostly might be aware because every YouTuber says that hit that subscribe, hit that bell icon. So you already know that I don't need to say that, although I say it. But anyways, just hit that subscribe icon and we will surely catch up in the next video.